Hanover shopkeeper gunned down, firearm seized. The Hanover police are probing the shooting death of 68-year-old Clinton Moody at a shop in Montpellier, Sandy Bay. They say a firearm and several rounds of ammunition were seized at the scene. The police report that about 8.05 p.m. on Sunday, residents reported they heard explosions coming from the direction of Moody's shop. Upon reaching the area, Moody was seen lying on his back over the counter with multiple gunshot wounds. A report was made to the police and on their arrival, the scene was processed. During the processes of the scene, a brown 9mm pistol with a magazine containing five 9mm rounds of ammunition was found. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigations continue. Man killed two injured in Clarendon Highway crash. A man was killed and two persons injured in a two-vehicle collision on the Bustamante Highway in Clarendon on Sunday night. The deceased has been identified as Alton Hayes of St. John Jones in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Reports are that about 7.10 p.m., Hayes was driving a Toyota Pro Box motor car from Savannah Cross towards Sandy Bay in the parish. He was reportedly maneuvering across the highway when his vehicle collided with a Honda Vista motor car and overturned. Hayes, a woman who was a passenger in the Pro Box and the driver of the Honda motor car, were all injured. They were taken to hospital where Hayes died while undergoing treatment. One killed, three wounded in St. James gun attack. A man is dead while three persons are hospitalized after gunmen attack a group of people returning home from a week in Cambridge St. James on Sunday morning. Reports were that sometime after 2 a.m., the victims were walking home when they were pounced upon by a group of heavily armed men. More than 30 spin shells from high-power rifles and a 9mm pistol were found at the scene of the shooting. Three persons were wounded in the attack while the body of 41-year-old Omar Beckford was later found along a dirt track with multiple bullet wounds. The other victims, ages 17, 16, and 23, were hospitalized for treatment. Hanover man accused of pointing gun at neighbor charged. A man has been charged after he allegedly pointed a gun at his neighbor as he took out the garbage on Friday in Kingsville District, Hanover. Charged with assault at common law and possession of a prohibited weapon is 24-year-old Tevin Cooper, otherwise called Tev, of Ginger Hill, Kingsville, in the parish. Reports are that about 9.30 a.m., a man was at home disposing of garbage when Cooper, who lives in the same yard, approached him and allegedly pointed a gun at him. A report was made to the police and an investigation was launched. Cooper was subsequently arrested and charged. His court date has not been finalized. Woman killed in front gully crash identified, six remain hospitalized. The police have identified the woman who was killed in Sunday's crash in front gully St. Anne. She is 49-year-old Susie Thomas, a housekeeper of Wildman Street in Kingston. A total of 23 persons were injured in the bus crash. The police say six of them remain in hospital in serious condition. Reports from the Autress Police are that about 11.20 a.m., Thomas was among passengers in a Nissan Carnova van heading towards St. Mary when, on reaching a section of the roadway, the right front tire blew out. As a result, the driver lost control of the motor bus, which collided with a stone wall and overturned. Several individuals sustained injuries, including 16 children and 7 adults. Prompt response from the police, fire brigade, and fellow motorists facilitated the transportation of the injured persons to hospital, where Thomas was pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. Teen suspected of drowning in Alligator Pan on Easter Monday. A teenager is suspected to have drowned in Alligator Pan, Manchester on Easter Monday after his body was retrieved from a beach there. Police identified the deceased as Nathaniel Thompson, 17, a student of Alphonse Davis High in Spalding. Our police report said about 10.30 a.m., Thompson went to an area known as Sea Reef with relatives and got into difficulty. His body was retrieved from the water and later removed to the morgue. The area, known as River, has been the scene of numerous drownings over the years. Last August, two people drowned at the location. A local community hero who saved people from drowning at the same location also drowned downstream the river in Alligator Pan a week after rescuing several people. This latest incident of drowning in Manchester follows another occurrence last Thursday in Ingleside, Mandeville, 
in the parish where a 16-year-old is suspected to have joined in a swimming pool. JTA President says association will remain true to mandate as it celebrates 60 years. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA Lane Johnson, says even as the association celebrates 60 years of existence, it will continue to remain true to its established mandate. Speaking at the association's 60th anniversary church service on Sunday morning, Mr. Johnson said while others think of 60 as a time to retire, the JTA believes it is time to recommit its duties. According to the President Johnson, the JTA will remain true to its mission while utilizing the current and modern convention aligned with the global standards and trends. He sought to highlight the work of the association in the last six decades, noting that it has contributed significantly to nation building. He said the association will continue to be the forefront in advocating for the rights of the island's educators. For many, accomplishing 60 years signals the end of an era and the beginning of a life of relaxation. For the Jamaica Teachers Association, 60 years represents resilience and strength as well as the commitment to remaining true to our established mandate and mission, utilizing the current and modern conventions aligned with global standards and trends. As we assemble in solemn reflection and celebration, we are reminded of the rich legacy and the enduring impact of six decades of dedicated service to education and nation building. Since our inception, the Jamaica Teachers Association has been at the forefront for advocating rights, welfare, and the professional development of our educators across our building. Agrimin partners with NCU to revitalize dairy sector. The Ministry of Agriculture has entered into a partnership with the Northern Caribbean University, NCU, to develop 40 acres of holder for the dairy sector. The institution also received six Jamaica Hope cattle from the ministry and a new milking parlor is to be constructed. Portfolio Minister Floyd Green made the announcement at the recent dairy revitalization project launch held at the institution in Mandeville. Mr. Green noted that for Jamaica to regain it would need its leader's status in the dairy sector, the amount of milk produced must be increased. He stated that while the dairy sector has faced significant challenges over the years, the ministry is looking to revitalize it. Mr. Green also noted that a team has been assembled to bring back the Jamaican hope bread. So what we're doing here is announcing a significant partnership with NCU to one, develop at least 40 acres of fodder. And we're going to do that for you free of cost. The government is going to take care of that cost. Because you can't have a strong dairy sector unless you have the nutritional elements that the cattle need. But additionally, we are also going to construct for you a new milking parlor. So that is something that is going to happen. And we are already committed to give you six Jamaica who cows, the cows are already here for you to start the work. What we want from NCU is clear. We want the research work. We want you to look at the performance of our Jamaica home and to do the research work to help us to move that performance further. At one time we were considered world lead. No, we're not seeing that. And if we're really going to move the needle in terms of dairy, we have to up our milk production. And that means we have to up the amount of liters we get from our cattle. So we're going to expect you to do the work in that. Also to do the work on our fodder banks and how we appropriately set up fodder banks and what type of grass is best suited for our changing climate. Very important if we're going to drive the development of our dairy sector. 5 million gallon water treatment system to be installed at low ground in Clarendon. The National Water Commission NWC is looking to replace two or three wells at the low ground facility in Clarendon with a 5 million gallon water treatment system. 
Minister without portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for information and Member of Parliament for Clarendon North Central, Robert Margon, led a water tour of the constituency on March 27 alongside NWC personnel. Water Production Manager NWC, Damien Wilson, explained it was three wells and we have only one in operation based on little or no water at all. The other two wells are pretty low based on the deforestation and we are now looking to replace that with a 5 million gallon water treatment system, he noted. Wilson said the system is expected to deal with the water woes being faced in the area as currently the dependence is only on one well while the other two contain sand. He said that the company is aiming to see how best we can augment water into this tropical area and its environs so that we basically alleviate most of the issues that we are having with water here. Morgan's tour was aimed at looking at the challenges being faced in the Rock River and Chapleton divisions as it relates to water. He was also joined by a council for the Chapleton division, Uriah Mitchell. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.